All right, that was Too Many People by Paul McCartney from the Ram album. All right, next is The Legend of Zorldo, Twilight Princess. This time, I'm going to uh, pray. I'm going to pray to Mallow that the game loading um, Avermedia does not crash my computer as it did last time and the time before that and the time before that. So if, um, I don't know, if let's say my stream just stops, it's because for some reason... When I load Avermedia into XSplit, my computer crashes. So. Let's see what happens. Ah. Uh, I was bracing for impact. <sighs> okay, we're good. Wait, what, what, what the fuck is this? What the fuck do you mean, enter your fucking password? Oh, for fuck's sake. Jesus. I have to enter a password to play Zelda? Are you kidding me? Wow, well, okay, well here's the best part. I already fucking downloaded Mitomo. Uh, hang on a minute, guys. We're, I'm having trouble here. Wow, really is asking for a password. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not making this up. I don't know which password it wants. I mean, because I have multiple, and I'm not sure if it wants my Nintendo or or what. Fucking Christ. Okay, um, I'm gonna try this again. I actually don't remember my password, my, my Nintendo ID. Well, there's premium con- okay, well, hang on a minute. Now you have to give me a few seconds here, because I may have to reset my password. How cool is this? I, I just need a password to play Zelda. This is so cool. Come on, sign in. Fuck you. All right. Why is it okay when Nintendo does this? Because I did recently get Mitomo, which changes things a bit since the last time I streamed on my Wii U. Or played on my Wii U, so I had to make a My Nintendo account. And I I pretty sure Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I made a new thing for that, but yet it's not accepting my password. My my ass word is not being accepted. Uh, okay, well, give me a minute. I'm going to put on a little bit more of that McCartney for a minute. From that Ram, that Ram album. Let's see.
makes telephone noises with his mouth. Anyway, Vappy, you can start here. In three, two, Zelda. Okay. <laughs> I enter. I'm. Um, we're good, guys. We're good. I've I've restored my Zelda account. No, Vap, Vap, please. Vap. I need you, Vap. Vap, I added you on Mitomo. Doesn't that count for anything? Vapey. Is that what you guys are- Why do you call him Vapey in chat? All right, here, anyway, here we go. Um, I just completed this dungeon. I have a fuckload of soup, and I am ready to move on to the next task, which is... I actually don't know what. Tell me, Midna. Okay, ancient wood in the, in the sky. All right, let me just, uh, let me go talk to that clown. I'm pretty sure the clown can get me into the sky. Alright, um, I guess we could, well, I have a few new things here. Um, Elden. Could get some hearts and stuff. No, I know you can't get to the sky dungeon just yet. I'm just hoping that the guy can shoot me out of a clown cannon and I can get stapled to the sky. Also, is the volume okay or? It sounds really loud to me. I don't know, maybe it's just on my end. If so, I can lower that. But you, you guys can hear me over the game? Is this is this how it normally is? Is this good? Is this acceptable? All right, cool. All right, yeah, so then I'm just, my volume on my end is a little loud. Cool, all right, thank you. Um, okay, so. I'm gonna look around on horseback. We're gonna have a nice relaxing stream. Maybe slightly loud. Okay, this should be good then. Yeah, I don't wanna stream from the peak Providence. I don't wanna have to yell while I'm trying to play the game. Oh, I didn't even get that treasure chest yet. Target practice. Let's see how many I can hit in a row without missing. That many. in this game look pretty decent. They're not... Again, I've, I've been, like, kind of paying attention just to see if anything here has been extra good or extra bad, and it's it's been pretty good. It hasn't, like, blown me away as an HD remake by any means, but it's, it's solid. Um, what the fuck? Yeah, it's a shame that the polygons are still low, but... Oh, I need the... Okay, I don't have the rod... ...yet. I didn't notice that. 
Okay, that's that's something I do remember. There's an item that I, I need to have before I can get that treasure chest. So let's just fuck off from here. And I'm gonna look for There's that one area that I needed the ball and chain for. So we're gonna go look for that, maybe. Find it. Also, did I get this motherfucker? It's one of my hobbies, calling bugs motherfuckers. Whoa! How the fuck did that work? Vapey vape. 88. It's new. Today I invented in Mitomo. Mitomo is good for creativity because I have, uh, you know, ideas when I'm answering questions. And uh, here's what I discovered today. I discovered that I want to direct a film of a new genre called Vomcom, which is just a vomit comedy. And I think it would be great to really explore that genre. Someone responded by saying that Adam Sandler has already mastered the Vomcom because they make you, you want to vomit while you're watching them. I can't argue with that. Do you like better, Adam Sandler or Adam Sessler? These are important questions. Sandler, Sess. Oh my God! What a mixed reaction this is. What? A God, what a mess. Holy fuck. Sandy Amberg. Oh, that's the Zora's domain. Um, I think that's where I have to be. Huh. Every now and then there's someone in chat that, like, thanks me for the streams and they say that they really... Yeah. They like the streams or the music, and I want you to know, I can only read some of them, because the chat goes really fast, and I'm also focusing on, on the game, but, um, oh god, wow, how the fuck did that happen? I just wanna, I wanna thank you for the kind words, always, and if you feel that way, I, I am appreciative, even if I don't read it, know that I do appreciate the sentiment, so, thanks. I kind of thought about, like, how is it that Adam Sandler films were so funny when I was a kid and so unfunny now? Like, I've watched some of Sandler's movies in recent days that I thought were really funny when I was a kid, and they were just okay. But his newer movie is just complete tripe. But, but here's the thing. Okay, Rodney Dangerfield, when he first... When he... This is probably a point that isn't going to work for a lot of people, but when Rodney Dangerfield first became big and he first started kind of like doing movies, he, he was cutting edge. And then if you watch some of his stand-up comedy from like the mid-90s, he's just reciting, like he's saying a lot of his old jokes. It's very formulaic, you know, can't get no respect to my wife, you know, blah, 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 wife. And I love Rodney. I do. But, um... That's the thing. Within 20 years, 
he went from cutting edge to formulaic. So this is... I've already done this, right? Sometimes time just kind of... And Adam Sandler, you know, he was kind of funny 20 years ago. So... Not, not, uh, and again, Rodney Dangerfield is a fucking legend. A fucking legend of Gin Alley. And I love Rodney, but uh, at the same time, I guess I was just a kid when Sandler was really funny, so. But I have no respect. It's because Adam Sandler's doing more kid-friendly movies that are crap. That's part of it, but I think it also has something to do with the fact that when you get to a certain level, like, Adam Sandler makes these movies so that he, Red Letter Media found, like, hypothesized that uh, Sandler makes he, these movies so that he and his friends can get a fat paycheck and also so they can go on a nice vacation. Which I, I really, I'm, I'm not sure if I, uh, if I can argue against that. I thought for sure that was gonna break that. Um, alright, well, I still need to find that spot, but maybe... Maybe right now I'm not going to do this. Instead, I'm just gonna look around a little bit, but I'm gonna head to the forest. His friends are washed up and unfunny. I don't disagree with that. I actually kind of like David Spade still. I don't think he's hilarious, but I, I kind of have a soft spot for the guy, especially after he lost his friend, you know, Chris Farley. There's there's just something that makes me feel bad about it. Uh, pretty sure I got that bug already, but I want to double check. Kevin James. I, I passed it? No shit. Yeah, David Spade was on Norm's podcast. North Hyrule Field. Uh, okay, so I did miss it. Yeah, I've been there already. Is Kevin James even relevant anymore? Yeah, I mean, his movies sell out. I mean, the, the dude gets huge box office appeal. I don't really find him funny. I mean, well, everything that made Chris Farley funny, I'd say that Kevin James is like a, like, you know when you just don't put enough coffee in the coffee pot and it comes out kind of like clear and it's just a little hint of, of coffee, but most of it is just water. All right. Chris Farley was a cup of, like, uh, was a pot of really a dark, beautiful dark roast. <laughs> and, and Kevin James is just like kind of a watered down, like, decaf, sh shitty coffee. That's, that's how I feel about that. However, Paul Blart, Maul Blart, part Blart was pretty, uh, was, I haven't seen it. I just like saying that. So, anyway, North Hyrule Field. I'm gonna go- I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna look for the fucking the thing I missed, then I'm gonna head to the forest. Alright, so this is Hyrule Field, right? Which means that this is North Hyrule Field. Someone in chat just said, watered down decaf is one of the worst phrases in existence. Yeah, man. I agree. I'm still really digging that Pete's coffee that I have that you guys recommended to me. It's like a darker, more caffeinated roast. It's, it's got like a really, really nice flavor. And uh, I really not even a lot of milk and sugar in that. I just let it kind of be like dark and it's awesome. Near the entrance to Zora Village. So I really was like right there and somehow I missed it. To Zora Village. Hey, yeah. How the fuck did I miss this? Actually, you, you mean Zora's domain. They don't really have a village, do they? Oh. Well, 
that's something in there. I don't know if that's it. My memory is absolute garbage. Like, I don't remember if I got this bug already. However, I can play you a riff I wrote six years ago on the guitar. Like, in terms of audio, I have a great memory. But when it comes to random shit like this, nah, nothing. That's... that's it. Right there. Okay. Here we go. What is this? Puzzles. And a weird camera. Would I challenge my music critics to a boxing match like Juve Bull did for his movies? That's such an, an amazing concept to me. The fact that he, he actually fi challenged his critics to a match of physical strength so he could punch them in the face. weather here? Uh, it's- I don't hear any, like, massive thunder, so maybe it cleared up a little bit. <laughs> oh, but that was just- that was just a test. This is the real challenge. Actually, there's- there's another one. Oh, fuck, mate. Too bad if I just. <laughs> then you might get a snowstorm tomorrow. What the fuck? <laughs> it's amazing. Yesterday and the day before were like 72 degrees, 75 degrees. It was it was amazing. We had amazing weather for the first time. <laughs> like we had a few nice days in New York, but it was it was incredible. And now. 48. You know, people are saying there might be snow. Can we, can we not do this spring? <laughs> to be fair though, this was around the time a week, okay, a year ago, a year and a week ago was PAX. And it was disgusting in Boston. Like, we're talking snow mountains. Farts. Mm. 
better than pussy farts. <laughs> you guys know the story about pussy farts? He was an old chat member. I started calling him PF, and then whenever I passed the Planet Fitness, what's the initials of which are PF, I would think of our wonderful chat member, Pussy Farts. Good times. I still can't look at a Planet Fitness logo the same way. Like that's never gonna be... That's never gonna be okay again for me. That's the whole story. <laughs> PF Changs. Oh, I don't we don't have any PF Changs here. But if there was a PF Changs, you can, you can goddamn well guarantee where my mind would be immediately. <laughs> no, we have we have really good Chinese food here though. We don't have a P.F. Chang's, we do have some other, like Staten Island has some pretty good Chinese food, but Manhattan? Oh my god, if you guys like Chinese food, you gotta go to Chinatown. There's like a fucking, there's a place called Joe's Shanghai in the city, and um, Hop Key, those are my two that I really like, and Wo Hop is pretty good too, but those are the two that you can go to, and just, they're, Joe's Shanghai, there's a wait forever, but Hop Key. You could usually get in. That's like a good place to go to after a night at the Whiskey Tavern. And then you go there and you fucking you grab some Chinese food. Three in the morning. <laughs> Not that I've ever done that. I've done that. Really elite Congo. Surprise, that's, that's really good pizza. But you, you know, Staten Island has some good pizza. Brooklyn has amazing pizza. Oh my god. If, listen, if there wasn't a fucking, by the way, this is true, if it wasn't a $15 toll to get to Brooklyn, I would definitely go to Brooklyn more often just to get pizza. Because there's some amazing pizza in Brooklyn. There we go. This is gonna be a stamp, isn't it? It's gonna be a Tingles ass stamp for all that hard work I just did. Yeah, fifteen dollars for the Verrazano Bridge. Fifteen dollars. Uh, with Easy Pass, it's less, but fifteen dollars for a fucking bridge. Oh, it's, it's it really is highway robbery. <laughs> Literally. And, and, may I add, also, it is a little bit AIDS. So I'm gonna just go ahead and say that, uh, if you can avoid bridges in the tri-state area, specifically in the five boroughs of New York City, do so, because they suck. Yeah, cool. Man, I am ready to live in the future where drones can deliver pizza, but like I said, that's gonna be when people invest in bow and arrow technology from, you know, thousands of years ago, of course, and uh, they're gonna use the bow and arrow to shoot the drones down, like the culling, and they're just gonna get free pizza, and then there's gonna have to be a whole fuckload of, like, Security drones and anti-drone laws and cameras and it's gonna be insane But yeah, I'm, I'm ready for drone delivered pizza definitely to look at the chat for a second and then my horse crashed into a wall. Hey up. Hey up. Hey up. 
Guys, I think I'm dying. I had pizza, like, three days in a row. Really? I was about to tell my pizza story. Fuck. <sighs> Greetings, Mr. Link. Here's a letter. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Defaris in Brooklyn is, is really good. That's the pizza I would recommend. And L&B. And there's more that uh, I haven't been to, but those are the ones that I know. And there's a few others that I can't remember the name of that I've also been to over the years. So those are my Brooklyn pizza recommendations. But if you go to Defaris, be prepared to wait a very long time. Uh, what was I say? Oh yeah, yeah. I had um, pizza accidentally. All right, so Thursday, I was in the mood for pizza, because I hadn't had pizza in a little while, right? So I get pizza on Thursday. I'm satisfied with myself and my decision to eat pizza. And then Friday comes, and my friend Tyler is like, hey, you know, thinking about going to get some pizza at this place we like, that we really like, with a few friends. He's like, want to come? I'm like, yeah, I just had pizza, but sure, I'll, I'll, I'll go get more pizza. So, do that overdose on pizza and then we go to this brewery that we go to every now and then for uh, some beer and you can order pizza I had eaten already but after like two hours I started getting hungry again and they ordered three pizzas my friends so then I ended up eating fucking pizza again today and I yeah I accidentally had pizza twice first time was deliberate second the other two times were not deliberate But I did have, um, a white pie today, which is just cheese and, as, as they say in America, ricotta, but my family says ri ricotta, you know what that is? Ri ricotta cheese? I love me some ricotta cheese on my pizza. White pizza, yeah. Yeah, you know what's up with the white pizza. I could think of a worse existence than eating pizza three days in a row, though. I'm... I'm... I may be dying, but I'm content, at least. And for some reason, I have... At this moment in my life, I have a metabolism especially well-suited for pizza. I'd like to think that, over time, my body adapted to the point where now I could just eat it. You know, have like a fucking six slices, house them, and then the next day, I'm- I'm good. That whole- actually, the whole day, I'm good. There's no- there's no buffer time. Everything's fine. Always. Give me like two more years, and then that is gonna turn into a, a problem. <laughs> I'll have one slice of pizza, and I'm gonna just, like, inflate. My favorite type of pizza. Um, I just... I like... Um... Okay, I like places where you don't have to get a topping. And their pizza is just, by default, amazing. That is preferable. You know, you can cover up a shitty pizza with a lot of toppings, and that's fine. I'm okay with that, but... I would rather have, like, just a regular, amazing slice. Uh, that said, my favorite toppings are pepperoni. Because, uh, that, that's an original answer. But it's true, though, pepperoni is amazing. Especially from a place that does it right. And I'm not talking about those big pepperoni nips, I'm talking about the little ones that curl up and have, like, little, like, reservoirs of delicious oil in them. Okay, this is, this is bad. I, I really... Oh god, I'm getting hungry for pizza again. Fuck my life. Um, I'd like a good sausage pie, of course. Yes, we call them pie. Pizza pie. Pizzi. Uh, I'm also a big fan of onions on pizza, which some people will find repulsive and disgusting, sorry. But, 
some places do onions really well. Gotta be cooked the right way. Um, black olives is a pretty good topping. And, um, meatball. If, if you find a right place that does amazing meatball, then that, that can be good. So those are my favorites. No pine- no pineapple, please. Now I'm looking at the chat. I knew the onions was gonna set some people off. Some people are totally like, yes, onions! And they're going crazy over it, and then other people are like, you are disgusting. This was- this was expected. Um, I think I could just warp now. I think I know where to go next. Uh, well, first of all, people want me to go to Telma's bar. So I guess I'll go there real quick. Banana peppers are good too, like, like red- Oh man, we had a- I'll tell you what we had yesterday. We had a- a pizza with fucking... Grilled chicken, right? Well, not grilled, but like, just- just chicken. I don't know, I guess- I guess it- um, like chicken parm type chicken, so it's breaded. With red, like the hot peppers. And... It's spicy, but it's amazing. Oh, I forgot I have mail, yeah. I'm gonna stop talking about this. Cause now I'm getting hungry again. Fucking hell. But I- I also enjoy a good fresh... Mozzarella pizza, which if you haven't had one of those yet, man, those are great. Just some basil, fresh mozzarella. I feel bad you pay me visit. I not much help. I feel better now. Husband and I sled. Lots fun now. Lots now. Very much fun. Join us at Snow Peak. And the tourism is open. What else is new? No, uh, all right. I think, um, when you're kind of, when you're from New York or even Chicago, you kind of have a bit of a pizza elitism, which I, I've been called out on before and I'd like to apologize for that. You know, whatever you like is great. If it's good, it's good. However, you, you really can't deny that New York has some great pizza. So when I say, like, when I talk about pizza, I'm thinking about specific things. I'm not talking about, like, Domino's. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. That doesn't mean I won't have a Domingo's from time to time. Me and my friends, maybe like once every two, three months, we'll, we'll order Domino's. Just, just because we want to be disgusting. We want to hate and punish ourselves. Hmm. You're alive and well. Tell me, did you find anything of interest at the Arbiter's Grounds in the desert? Sages, those sages once served the royal family, actually. They were appointed as tutors to the young Princess Zelda. It was from them that I first heard tales of the accursed mirror in the Arbiter's Grounds. Link, huh? The Beast of Snow Peak hasn't appeared in Zora's domain since its last visit. In the end, the troubles in Hyrule and the events on Snow Peak were beyond even my imagination. Honestly, there's gotta be someone who knows what really happened. Th that me, me. Would you care to hear about the sky beings again? I'm quite sure. Don't mind, really. From my point of view, the sky beings are evil! How's that little idiot doing, honey? I'm sure that shaman will find a way to get her memory back. That Renato is a talented man, for sure. Anyway, honey, you've got your own things to worry about, so you just make sure you do what needs doing now, okay? If you're up for um, hey, honey, if you're up in the air, about where to go next, maybe you ought to talk to Russell. He's in Hyrule Southern Wood right now, checking out the lay of the land. If you need detailed directions, just take a peek on the map on the table. Okay. Hagrid. I'm telling you, Link. He, like, this was his awakening. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I 
I always wondered about like Link in Ocarina of Time. Like he didn't actually go through puberty properly. He just skipped the formative years and went straight to adult. I'm sure he was confused as fuck whenever he saw something that was, you know, mildly curvy. Holy shit, is that a piece of driftwood? Just to reference Rick and Morty. He's like, oh, a curvy piece of driftwood, what's happening? My tunic! So Bob's Burgers, Season 5 is now on Netflix. Which is good because I had not seen Season 5. And now I have more Bob's Burgers to watch. So, if you hear the teddy voice again, it's because I'm watching Bob. Okay. Wait a minute, isn't there closer? There was a closer one, wasn't there? It was, uh... Yeah. That's a good burger joint. I don't know. I like, um, in the city there's a place... Jeff, where did we go that time? After the AVGN thing. Um, Jackson Hole. That's the name of it. Jackson Hole. These burgers are so fucking ridiculously stupid big that you have to eat them with like a fork and knife. If I mean you you can eat them with your hands. I I, I do that, but they're they're amazing how fucking huge these burgers are, but they're delicious. That's my go-to for giant burgers. Yeah, stop making me talk about food, because <laughs> I'm getting hungry, you're getting hungry, this is bad. I wanted to, I've always wanted to try. Who, who the fuck is Jeff, someone said. Vigibum. I've streamed, uh, The Calling with him. A number of times. In-N-Out Burger I've wanted to try so bad. We don't have any on the East Coast. I, I really would like to try it. I've heard so many good things. But I'll stop now. It's been a while since we took a walk in the forest, huh? Yes. And how our world has changed. Say, do you know about the far side of this deep gorge? Some say there is an ancient temple deep in the woods that guards a sacred power. The ancestors of the Hylians created the temple. Signs of their civilization. Ancient, but very sophisticated. Are everywhere. If someone could obtain the power of those ancient people, well, I'm sure it would go a long way towards saving Hyrule. Link, would you take on this task? across the gorge and find the ancient power sleeping in the temple. <laughs> I know you would. To cross the gorge, just use my partner here. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Do you doubt my partner's skills? He flies like a dream, believe me. Well, you'll definitely make it across the gorge. Wait and see, my doubting friend. <laughs> Really on a chick, a golden chicken right now. Is this is this really fucking happening? Oh, Jesus, this is amazing.
I'm like, I'm a, whoa, I'm afraid I'm gonna throw the chicken into the gorge, and then I will no longer be able to progress in this game forever. I don't need you anymore. See ya. Guess I've already done that, right? Or do you have to be a wolf? Let me just make double. Let me just double check. Yeah, I've already done that. Twinkle, twinkle, little cuckoo. I am gold and not for you. Ooh. Wow. One must scream to release the power within one's soul. The sword alone is not enough. Hey, why do I get criticized? When I make my my dumb noises, like, yeah! Meanwhile, Link is like, Like, every two seconds. The dude does not shut the fuck up. Entirely sure what I'm supposed to do here, but I, I don't know if it's follow the skull kid again. May, may, maybe. Yeah, Povius. By the way, I don't know how that reminded me, but it reminded me, um, the Red Vox album is now on Spotify, which I wasn't sure if it was going to be a fucked up version, but it seems like it's, it's good. Um, someone said there was a, a pop in Job in the City. Can anyone confirm that? In any case, yeah, there it is. Just wanted to throw that out there. I, I think that was the most common question aside from, will it be on vinyl? Which I still... I st I'm going to say no to that right now, and probably for the foreseeable future. See how that could be the I really don't see how that could be the case, but it's weird. Um didn't notice it popping. Okay, thanks. Never mind. It might be just someone either shit posting or they heard me drop my notebook at the end of it. So alright, cool, thanks. 
And yeah, again, just, just to say, like, in general, I'll tell you what I've learned about vinyl, because I did a little research about it. So vinyl is a huge medium for collectors. Some people think it sounds better, which I don't deny, but I just wouldn't know. And vinyl, you can get custom made, but it's, we're talking like a lot of money. And you need to, um, like CDs, I was able to get a thousand of those printed, right? Or produced. And CDs are cheaper when you get more of them. And I could charge only ten dollars for them. I could keep the price down because they're they're easy to make CDs. They're well not that easy, but they're easier to make. Vinyl would take about three months. I've learned that the process there's a huge backlog because it's such a big thing right now, um, and it's really expensive. And I'd probably have to charge like twenty five bucks per vinyl. And if I didn't get a thousand or like eight hundred, it would be really 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 expensive. You know, because the, the price, the more you produce, the price goes up, or price goes down. So, that's why I've been saying no to vinyl, and why I will continue to say no to vinyl. So, sorry, collectors. Uh, this is back right in the beginning, right here. I know it's not too bad of a price, but uh, it's still like, you know, getting them produced. Like, sure, the CDs were cheap enough that I could take the hit. Like, I'm the one, I don't have a record company making them, you know, buying the vinyl production. It's just me. So, when it comes to, like, vinyl, if I'm gonna spend, like, a lot of, like, $5,000, or, like, $8,000, or however much, and there's a chance that they won't actually sell, then that's, that's not, that's not good. That's not good, okay? So, yeah, it's not, not something I'm willing to, uh, fuck with right now. Maybe I'll call Jack White and say, hey, can can you uh, get me some vinyl to make them at Third Man Records? That would be great. Why not get one made then mold your own? You know how lazy I am? I, I remember I was shipping out kazoos and buttons for a little while. I probably shipped out like 60. I, I was like hating life. I was like, no, I can't do this anymore. This sucks. Printing out shipping labels was hard enough. Actually making my own vinyl would be like a nightmare for me. Yeah, I'm too lazy for that, sorry. However, I can make middies. Those are collector's items too. So, and they, they could be free. You can just get as many middies as you want. Um, and I'm like, okay, these motherfuckers, I'm gonna stop attacking them now, because they're... Really annoying me. Someone said go to the bottom of the, of the lake. I'm gonna do that, see what happens. Like looking down here to see if there was anything, but there is nothing down here. Go to the path that's lit. Alright. I mean, you can tell the difference. Set release. Okay, that's another thing that's making a resurgence, and I will. Oh, I see. I see now. Okay, um, that's the what. That's what you meant by lit. I think the cassette thing, the resurgence of cassettes. Vinyl makes sense. Cassette really does not make any sense to me because you. I don't think there's an increase in quality. It's just nostalgia. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and say that cassettes sound like ass, in my personal opinion. I could be wrong, you guys might feel otherwise, but for me, I think cassettes sound like just unfettered feta cheese ass. So...
I'm not sure why that one made a comeback. That's like when you go to Brooklyn, when you go to Williamsburg, and you see like dudes walking down the street in a Colonel Sanders hat. Okay, maybe Colonel Sanders doesn't wear a hat, but okay. They're dressed in a- I've, I've often said that I've gone to Brooklyn and I've seen what was- what looked to me like a Civil War group, like a Civil War reenactment group, with big beards and, and man buns, and like wearing Civil War outfits. And like Indiana Jones hats, that's a fedora, actually. And uh... I think those are the guys that like, uh, cassettes. Oh, I hear it now. Now I don't hear it. Show me. Oh, I see. Okay, I wasn't paying it. I was busy talking about stupid things, and now... I lost my way. I think it's time to go up this way. Release your album on wax cylinders. Did you ever see the video of that dude who's holding that rare, like, phono phonograph thing, the, the cylinder, that's worth, like, tens of thousands of dollars. It was on like a tech TV show, and then like he's- he's holding, he's really nervous, and he just like, cracks it, he breaks it. Oh, I, I hear the scumbag, I don't see him. Oh, there you are, you little bastard. McScully Culkid. Yeah, that's the one. Gearmatic. That this is the is one. This is a one of a. Here, this is this video is pretty viral for a while. This this is a it's an old video, but this is what I'm gonna get the album on. This right here. Pine piece. There's no other one like this particular one in the world, and you can see the tracks go this way, and. Um, it's really cool because it, it records much more accurately than... Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Um, well, that does happen every uh, once in a while. That can't be good. Uh, now, uh, should, is, is, are you done with that, uh, then? Yeah, I'm done with that. All right. <laughs> can't, apparently, we're, we're really <laughs> done with that one. Now, uh... Yeah. Uh, so there, there's that one. You know... You know what kills me about that video? The fact that the dude was trying to censor himself. Like... He was trying really hard to censor himself. He goes, oh, f shit. As if somehow shit is more acceptable to say on American TV. Which it isn't. Well, at least not when that was around, but... <laughs> that poor guy. He just wanted to show off his rare thing, and then... I used to watch Tech TV a little bit. There's some good stuff on there. The screen savers and all that. I was like, oh man, internet stuff on TV. album on Game Boy cartridge. Oh, okay. Hi! Welcome to X-Play with me! Uh, Adam Sandler. That was fun. I'll tell you what, I'll let you into a secret place.
So these are the same Lost Woods from Ocarina of Time, right? Textures. Look at the textures on the ground. You see the textures? It looks different. I don't believe that it's the same one. But then again, I guess things change in thousands of years. How however many years passed since Ocarina to this. Which are we ever given a definitive answer as to how long passed between Ocarina and Majora to Twilight Princess? Cause I have Hyrule Historia. I remember studying the shit out of that, but I don't remember if there was an exact Indicator. Probably thousands, we don't know. Hmm. Alright. Also... Give me just a second before we go any further. One sec, guys. Bug. I hear a bug. Do you hear that bug? I wonder if the wolf can talk to these burbs. No. Uh, those burbs are off limits. Yeah, I think I got this bug when I was done with uh, getting the Master Sword for the first time. I guess you only get the Master Sword for the first time. Uh, birds are good people, but they like to shit on my car. I'm see like I'm talking like massive loads. Like load shits. I don't even fucking park under a tree. What the hell? I don't want to know what changed. Like, when I first got the Master Sword, couldn't I have done that? And maybe had a similar result earlier? I guess? I don't- I don't know. Oh, fuck. I want to try to just say, maybe the goddesses- are really moody and like shuffling the, the principal geography. Yeah, that could be. Could be. Get closer. 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 Closer to. Hey, follow me. Follow me! Oh, you guys suck. Come on. You don't want to party? Come on. Party. Have a have party. Pizza party. Right here in the middle. Mm. 
Well, I'm rattling my chains. I know you can't hear me, but... I would have have I would have preferred to have done that as Link because it would have looked cooler, but that's fine. Thomas, can you hear me? Ah, oh, man, I love that that album, Thomas, from the Whom. Such a great band, the Whom. Yeah, that Thomas album was was also very good. There's a song on it, Pinball Lizard. He's a pinball lizard. There has to be a twist. Pinball lizards got such a supple wrist. Like that other song where he goes, I am free. <laughs> a lot of people aren't going to get this. The Hume. Oh, wait a minute. I remember this. This was cool. Nintendo knows what the fuck they're doing. Nostalgia. be a bit of a stickler here and I'm gonna say that this doesn't look very much like the Temple of Time from Ocarina. First of all, there were never any scholars. Are these the seven wise folk from Link to the Past? Or like some kind of homage to that? But yeah, there weren't any stairs. I mean, it's a minor nitpick, but it is something that I have to be an asshole and point out, because when I first played this game, I was like, Ah, oh, this is so cool! It's the, the same music, and it's- wait, this looks different. I guess it changed, they rebuilt it, you know. Many years have gone by. One of the kings, maybe the king from the CDI games, was like, We need a bigger temple. Time split at Ocarina of Time. That's well. Hang on a minute. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Why the Aku would not be in here already. Good on you, Nintendo, for covering your bases. Um, but this is according to the uh, according to Hyrule Historia. This is directly on the timeline of Ocarina. Eyes perfect. Oh, I remember enjoying this temple's music. Link, don't you think there's something odd about that statue? In the grove and in the temple entry, there were always matching ones on each side, but there's only one here. Why don't you use your senses and take a look around? Part of me misses the, uh, Link to the Past format, where there is a distinct temple theme. Knew it. There was one here originally. We need to find the other statue in this temple to match this one. Because the temple themes in Link to the Past were just fucking outstanding. Ha! <laughs> 
But then the other part of me really likes what they did from Ocarina onward with the ambient temple music, where each temple had its own distinct flavor. It's really, uh... It's kind of, you know, both are good, but I always prefer stronger melodies to more ambient stuff. That's just kind of how I am. That said, I love the soundtrack in this game. You got a good mix of the ambient stuff as well as really, really good compositions, really good melodies and all that. Uh, not so fast. At least this is it. This is where I've been trying to get to. The ancient technology of our people sleeps in this place. We've searched all over and now we're so close I can smell it. Once we find that thing, we can go home at last. Oh gracious, yes. Uh, young man, we're so close. Could you please help us find what we're looking for? Yeah, you didn't- you didn't think the, uh, Link to the Past dungeon music was all that great? Whoever in chat just said that. I think it was pretty good. A little repetitive, but... I liked it. This would not be a good time to run out of lantern oil. You've got a small key, now fuck yourself with it. That's the chav version of the game. Oh, look at you, you've opened a fucking door, go fuck yourself. It's like the, um... <laughs> the, the Pokemon trainer assistant in Pokken, except... They just ridicule you every step of the way. Which makes you kind of want to try harder. It's like a worse Navi. Oh, look at you. You found a rupee. Great. But you're very, you're really fucking smart. Great. You figured out a puzzle. It was designed for a three year old. Good for you, you fucking twonk. Reminds me, this temple, just as a whole, reminds me a lot of, uh, what is the temple in Wind Waker that I'm thinking of? Temple of the Gods. The Tower of the Gods. There you go. Yeah, this is thematically. And just the way it looks kind of reminds me of that a lot. So I made a big mistake.
this temple is fucking with my instincts as a Zelda fan. I just want to break pots all day. You bloody idiot. You weren't supposed to break those fucking pots. I swear on me fucking Jacobs. Oh, look at you. You figured it out. You're right, twat. You know that. guys uh, opinions about something I think it's how, how cool is it you think when people on Twitter have their Twitter profile picture as your face you think you would uh, you think you would enjoy that it's pretty fucking weird and I recommend against it Gil's butt. Yeah, Gil's butt, that's fine. Just the face is different. Yeah, just as a general rule of thumb, I find that kind of weird when people have profile pictures of, of like YouTubers or whoever, but specifically me. It's like, really? Got nothing better. <laughs> Yo, Morty. People had pictures of their favorite band. I mean, well, there you go. That's that's when you start getting into like it. It gets questionable, you know, because like if I had a picture of Jimmy Page as my profile picture, because I'm a big fan of the guitarist Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin, then then you're in like like okay, is this? Is this weird, or is it just, well, there's Jimmy Page? I, w I wonder how Jimmy Page feels about it. He probably doesn't give a shit. But... Yeah, in general, it's it's one of those things that, uh... I've noticed, um... I've actually had a few conversations... ...with some other people that that do the YouTubes about that. And, uh, yeah, it's... I don't... I don't no, no one's really flattered by it. So yeah, yeah, I don't really have an answer. I'm not gonna pretend I have an answer. I don't- I don't know if it's okay. It's, I guess, on an individual level, you know? But, for me, if I see an account like that, I'm usually very quick to disregard it. Sorry to say. And I would kind of say, like, well, if, you know, if there's a band photo, maybe. But what if you use the band logo instead? Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> what if it's a drawing of you that they did themselves? A little less creepy, definitely. I think that that's not so bad. But I'd say if you can draw someone else, draw yourself and then use that as your profile picture. But that's, you know, that's just me. That's my opinion. I, I wouldn't try to... I would not presume. What if it is the picture of said person's genitals? Alright, then, then we're in sexy territory. I would say that's fine. I don't know how Twitter's terms and services would handle that, but... What if you hate yourself? Wow! Wow, I guess there's a lot to consider with this, huh? I'm not a fan of it, personally. I would- I would definitely prefer if people, you know, didn't do that. That would be, uh, as a request, you know, from someone that you enjoy watching their streams. That's- that's probably the only thing I would say. You know, I mean, there's- there's obvious levels of creepiness, and there's obvious levels of digging into people's personal lives, but, uh, just the profile picture thing is something I've noticed a lot for a lot of YouTubers. <laughs> okay, these things remind me of ticks, and ticks are fucking terrifying to me. Anytime I was in any way, shape, or form in the woods or in nature, it was drilled into my head to wear as much- as much clothing as possible because of ticks. And then I remember one time I saw a picture of a tick full of, like, blood, and it, it was huge. Like, fucking massive. Totally filled with ticks, uh, with tick- with blood, <laughs> rather. And, yeah, that- that is still terrifying to this day, that- that thought. I- there's still that picture. You can probably find it online easily. But, yeah, you gotta be careful with that shit. Like, I'm glad I heeded that advice for as long as I did, because... Shit sucks, man. It's a reason tick rhymes with dick. Did I play through Wind Waker on stream? Yeah, I did, actually. Um, so... Oh, fairy. Uh, so a true story about Wind Waker. So it's on Vappy's channel. Because that was before Full Sauce happened. So if you want to watch my Wind Waker playthrough, that's all on Vappy. Just type Vine Sauce Wind Waker. Um, one of the parts got muted. But I was able to re-upload it. I still had the stream, luckily, and I was able to re-upload it to Full Sauce. So if you see, like, a random-ass Wind Waker stream on Full Sauce, out of, like, nowhere, it is because that particular part was muted on the playlist. So, if you get to a part, part 13, that's muted, and you want to continue watching it with the sound, just check the comment section, and you'll see I posted the link. I love Wind Waker so much. That was... Wind Waker HD was one of my favorite streams. I say that a lot, but I, I really mean it. A lot of Zelda streams are a lot of fun, but... That one in particular was just great. I enjoyed the fuck out of that game. That was actually my second time streaming Wind Waker. The first was the GameCube version, and then when HD came out... Probably... A year and a half to two years after I streamed the GameCube version. Maybe two years? That's when I, uh, when I streamed it again, and, uh, I really, that's, that's a hard game for me to get sick of. It's, it's so fucking beautiful to look at, and there's so much to discover, and there's a lot of fun stuff in it. And the whole, like, you know, some people hate the sailing in Wind Waker, which I understand, they may, but the HD version with the fast sail is much quicker. And, the, you know, some of the other stuff got sped up a little bit, too, so... It's just a... it really is great. <laughs> Where 
actually have to use this pot. Yeah, I agree. The sailing in the GameCube version was also fine. I didn't really have much of a problem with it. It was a little tedious at a few moments, but I would rather have what it was than a watered-down version. Oh, I can't bring this up there. Uh, I need to... I think I need to bring this up through that lift. Now, this is a little fucked up because I have to, <laughs> I have to do this without getting hit. Alright, the one on the outside is pretty slow, I got this. words need an L. Just like the encoded Hylian language. Labia. There you go. I'm, I'm trying to figure out things like ways to abuse the tools that Nintendo has given us. Like in Mitomo, for example. You can curse. I have seen multiple people say the word cock and fuck and shit and all that fun stuff in Mi Tomo, and the me will say it. There's no censorship in the, uh... Mallow. <laughs> Lake Queef. I, I think that's a pretty overly specific one, but yeah, anyway. I've seen in Mi Tomo people's posts... Uh, they answer questions, and it's just, yeah, the, the, you know, the me just reads it back to me. It's like, fuck my cock. I'm like, whoa! Oh, Nintendo, you're alright with this? Much more fun that way. That they don't censor it. There should always be... an option to turn that shit on or off. I mean, especially since this is a cell phone game. You know what I mean? Like, there doesn't need to be censorship here. We're not, like... Not everyone that uses Mitomo is gonna be a bab that doesn't know what the word fuck is. Flashback to The Sims by seeing that green diamond.
Oh, come on, that was good. Are those the Beemos of this game? It's like one of the most radically different Beemos in the series. That's not how you were supposed to do that, Ben. stream the Rogue Squadron re-release sometime. Yeah, I think uh, I would like to. I really would. I think uh, maybe I'll wait until after Twilight Princess. I'll probably could complete that game in like three streams. Because it's like, you know, you do three, three or four missions per stream. Rogue Squadron is notoriously hard to emulate. And the PC version that came out years ago is fucking ancient to the point where I couldn't get it to run in any acceptable form whatsoever. So, yeah, seeing that there's a re-release on Steam has made me very happy. I'm just waiting for fucking Turok 2. Like, that's my- <laughs> it's gonna sound insane, but that's my number one most anticipated game at the moment. I really hope there's online multiplayer. I would love to play that game online again, or uh, the multiplayer in that game again. This time, at more than 20 frames a second, and online. I hope that's what's taking them so long. the new Doom. I was offered to play Doom. Like, you know, you know how sometimes I get keys? There's a chance that I might get a copy. And, uh, as I've said in the past, you know, these aren't, like, you know, from the publisher. Like, hey, you should play this game and totally say how good it is. It's more like what they do is they give it to YouTubers and streamers for promotion purposes, and you are allowed to trash talk it. But, you know, they would prefer if you didn't, but, you know, fuck them. Well, I've only burned, like, five or six bridges with developers and publishers, because I didn't like their game. But, it's not too bad. Another few hundred to go. But, um, yeah, I would like to, I would like to play the Doom I don't know if I'd stream it in full, but, uh, I'd, I'd be down for some multiplayer. I'd be down to clown. Maybe check out the, uh, single player a little bit. If I really like it, then yeah, I'll stream the whole thing, sure. But I don't know. I've said a few times that, uh... I'm having some weird thoughts about... QTEs in a Doom game. That was my initial impression. It still is. In fact... I gotta say, I'm actually more... interested... I was kind of talking shit about Final Fantasy XV the other day. And people were getting upset. Which is, you know, fair enough, I suppose. But I'm actually more interested in Final Fantasy XV than I am Doom. And I had some harsh words about Final Fantasy XV. But I've, I've since warmed up to it based on a few um, more kind of videos and talking to my friend Tyler about it and learning the story of the game has warmed me up to it a little bit more. Like, he kind of convinced me that it could be really good. You know, I'll... I want it to be good. I really do. I want to, I want to like, Square again so much. Also, to finish my thoughts on what I said that the Final Fantasy series has kind of lost its sense of identity a bit. See, 
when Final Fantasy VII came out, I'm sure people said the same thing. Because guns and, and you know, reactors and cities, as opposed to, like, castles and fantasy. And the thing about that is, it was a welcome change. Seven is a bit overrated for some people, but I, I like Seven, and I like the, the world it created. But there were still villages, there were still, like, you know, towns. You still had that Yamatsu soundtrack. You had a world map, you had an airship, you had, you know, the ATB battle system. You had, um, party members that you could switch between, and... You know, there was a lot of, despite the game being very different visually and, and aesthetically to the previous games, Final Fantasy VII still had a lot of the, the staples of the series. Obviously, more than just chocobos I'm talking about, like, the gameplay mechanics, etc, etc. This game, when I look at it, I've been so out of the loop with Final Fantasy for so long, and I didn't really love X that much that when I look at it, I'm like, this doesn't remind me of Final Fantasy at all, except some of the character designs and the chocobo scene, and maybe some of the enemies. And that's one of the reasons I was a little shitty about it, which I'll acknowledge, perhaps, I was a little wrong about that, because the game does look cool. I watched the trailer again, and I still feel it's got, um, a little bit of... It's like, really... Really, like, kind of... modern. And that's not a bad thing, necessarily. And, uh, I gotta say, after talking to Tyler, after watching the trailer again, I'm more excited for it than I was. Doom, I'm still lukewarm about. But I'm hoping it'll be good. Someone in chat just said Final Fantasy VI is better than Final Fantasy VII. I'd actually probably agree with that. He also said, come at me. He knew he was going to get some people to come at him. There's a lot of Final Fantasy games that are better than Final Fantasy VII. It's just VII was the, the gateway drug <laughs> for a lot of people, so to speak. And it was it really is a great game. Having streamed it recently, I still think it's awesome. Just not the, you know, savior. It's not like fucking the, the foreskin of Christ. It's just a good game. But it's not anything like... I don't think it's better than 9. I don't think it's better than 6. They said if 15 doesn't do well, they're done with console Final Fantasy games. Remember when Wind Waker? We talked about this. Very interesting parallel to this game. Because when Wind Waker didn't sell quite so well, Nintendo was like, if Twilight Princess doesn't sell really well, then Zelda as we know it could be very, very different. Like the Zelda series was in jeopardy because of the lukewarm reception to Wind Waker. And Twilight Princess saved the series to the point where it continued being a huge name, big budget series. So maybe, maybe it's the same for uh, Final Fantasy 15 or something very reminiscent of that. Like Sakurai keeps saying that's his last Smash game, but I don't I don't think Smash ever had a problem with sales. Smash has always been a, a hugely important game for Nintendo. Well, maybe the one for N64, it wasn't quite as important. It was a great game, but it was still like, oh, that fun party game that we're gonna play after having pizza on a Friday. And then Melee was just huge, it exploded. I'd say Smash is Nintendo's most important series right now, aside from, like, Pokemon. Just in terms of, of how it keeps people interested in their console games. I can't tell you how many people did not know what a Wii U was until I brought Smash over. And then, like, a no okay, so my friend 
Jackie. There's like a lot of extended people in this group that I know a little bit. Some of them I see once a year, some once every two months, some once a month, and some once every two weeks. But the ones that I see once a year, I remember one night when Smash 4 came out, I brought my Wii U over to her house. And there was like 20 people. And we had uh, eight controllers. Which I vied, I was like, listen, can we just do, f like, four players instead of eight? Because eight is just a clusterfuck. So we kind of start. we did both, we switched it up. But, of those 20, like, a number of people were, like, asking a lot of questions about the Wii U. What other games is on it? What is it? Is it an add-on to the Wii? It was crazy. You know, and then some of these gamers only play, like, PS4 or PS3 at the time. And just Battlefield and Call of Duty. And, like, you know, Uncharted, all the big-name games. And they were just like, well, Nintendo doesn't have any grown-up games. Like, that old stigma was was still really, really there for them. And then Smash came out, and then a number of them not only bought a Wii U, but got back into Nintendo. And, you know, I've had conversations about Hyrule Warriors with people. People have asked me about Splatoon. Um, it's been really, you know, it, it was a good thing for them. Because then, they understood that Nintendo not only had this amazing Smash Brothers game, but that there were other games on it, and it wasn't just Wii with a c fucking tablet. You know, and they like, oh, this controller sucks, it looks big and bulky and gross. I was like, try it. And they tried it, and they were like, okay, this is kind of really amazing. So... And it took... Me bringing Smash Brothers over a friend's house to even get that far, otherwise they wouldn't have even cared. I remember in the past I had uh, conversations about the Wii U, because I'm like the go-to video game guy, and... You know, they were asking me like, oh, do you have a PS3, you have an X-Bone, etc, etc. I'm like, well, I kind of mainly play PC games and I like the Wii U, and they're like, well, what, what is the Wii U? I'm like, well, it's, it's got these games on it, and they're like, yeah, but nah. It was just no interest until Smash came out. No interest. But now I have an X-Bone. And I enjoy my X-Bone for a <laughs> TV. <laughs> and, and Conquer. And, uh, and the Halo game I've played twice. Alright, here we go, guys. We got a Dark Knight. Ooh. Hello, friend. Get me that armor. Get rid of it. We don't need it. Oh shit. Fast Dark Knight now. Oh shit. Oh, he's busting out the rapier. Oh, technically it's just a long sword. Never mind. I haven't fought one of these things since 10 years ago, so let me, uh, uh, let me get my bearings about me. This is gonna be kind of a bitch, isn't it? Fuck. 
fucking kicking me. Stop it, dude. Oh, you have to actually follow through with that with, by, with a button press. A half A press. Can't wait to fight like three of those at a time. That's gonna be awesome. No, this isn't a first playthrough. My my previous playthrough was literally ten years ago. When the game first came out. And also this is hero mode. And, uh, I'll, I'll figure out how to get them eventually. I remember having it down. So anyway, this is the- this is the domin- Okay, this is the Dominion Rod, which is in Hyrule Warriors. And it allows you to... Exude dominion over over statues. If you're bored, it's a lot of fun. It's like one of those games where you have the cup and the string, or the paddle with the ball and the string, and you just hit it back and forth over and over again. Back in my day, before we had Nintendo, Back before Nintendo, all we had... All we had <laughs> was the ball game, where you catch the ball in the cup. I might be able to finish this dungeon. I don't know how, I don't know how much more of this dungeon there is, but I could probably knock it out if I if I don't suck for the next 20 minutes. Then again, I almost streamed until 5 last night. I'm I'm really hoping not to duplicate that. It has nothing to do with you, if one can help it. Oh, that's not... That's not for consumption. Yeah. Spike things. Yeah, spikes. Wanted to double check. It's definite.
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was just wondering if there was anything else I had to do, because there's a suspicious thing in the room, but I guess I already did that. without the huge statue. Oh, wait a minute. So I only have that one statue. There aren't multiples of that big statue. Oh. Yep! I love those spinners. They're so fucking fun, though. The statue... Oh, that's good. Where did it- guys, where did it go? Where the fuck did it even- Is it in that bell that I- I was- Okay. Alright, obviously this isn't gonna happen tonight then, because I'm- I'm playing like shit, but... All the way back at the beginning. Okay, cool. Alright, got it. Yeah. and enter. Um, I think what I need to do is... I kind of see what I have to do now. Again, vaguely familiar, but it's just been so long. I don't, I don't, I don't fucking know. It, this was not something that I considered I had to do. Oh, but yet that is so satisfying. Please tell me I can break this. No. <laughs> I can't get revenge on that. Some things are just too powerful. That feels good. That feels great, being able to kill these fucking things. Not destroy them, kill them.
I see. Yeah, this this is familiar. They go in the bell, and then they teleport to the next bell, to the next room. This is a very, very good dungeon. I like this dungeon. So, Vinny, you got the album on iTunes, Spotify, and Bandcamp. Next, Malomart. How did you know? Malomart is... the next frontier. Spes. Final front... tier. Balance this one out. Oh God. Way harder than it should have been. cool. Stop. Let me do my show for Christ's sakes! little ones equal one big one. Or actually, no, they're actually heavier. Well, with Link on, on board as well. Okay, spinner. his heart out. Yeah, I found out that the, uh, the Poe Lantern... T. Oh, there's some good ones with T. Trash. Twat. Tits. As if trash is a curse word. It's not. Uh... I feel like... Was that like what was I just saying? Yeah, the Poe Lantern is not all that amazing. It just tells you when there's a Poe nearby. So if you don't see a Poe and you you have a glaring suspicion that you might have a Poe in the area, that's when you use it. stream with what, like 400? Or 200 something.
was it 351? We'll see. <laughs> I got this, like, memory foam pillow. Because, uh, my previous pillows just suck at this point. Because, you know, old. And after a while, pillows just start getting flat. No matter how many, how many times you put them in the dryer, they, uh, they still suck. Anyway, I got this shredded memory foam pillow. And the thing about it is it smells like... I don't know what it smells like. It smells like it, an unwashed industrial plant. It really smells gross. But I've been told that that's gonna stop soon. Um, really firm pillow. Like, really a lot firmer than I thought. It's, it's pretty good. Like, I like it. It's, um... Yeah. Well, I mean, memory foam pillows get suck as well. Even more. Uh, that sucks. Well, I figured, why not? Let me give it a shot. It was on sale for 20 bucks on Amazon. I was like, I, you know, I want to try a memory foam pillow. I never had one before. And, uh, the smell, I, I know, is going to go away. And I'm wondering if it ever stops being quite as firm. Because, like, I'm going to use the tit analogy. Just as I used the coffee analogy earlier. So my interests are really showing through tonight. A little firmness is nice. You want that. But you're not, you know, you're not like 40-year-old virgin, like, like 40-year-old virgin where he's like a bag of sand. You know, you don't want a bag of sand. You want a nice soft tit. You know what I mean? Like Louis C.K. said, you always know a tit. And that's why I only buy pillows that are of the softest variety. You understand, of course. So I'm a little bit upset that this pillow is so firm. It's pretty good overall. I think maybe it'll get better before it gets worse. But it's still a little, um, it's still a little bit weird for my liking. I'm not used to it. Now is not the time. <laughs> God, I ruined the chat. Now, actually, it's not as bad as you would think. <laughs> if you're watching this on full sauce, the chat is not as terrible as you think right now, but it has a few, a few things. Pillows, all caps, letters spaced out. Thick, T H I C C. <laughs> What's it say? Usually they're temperature responsive. So. Like, before you go into bed, put it under the blanket so that it's not exposed to the air. Okay, I'll, I'll give that a shot. Also, every fucking time, you'd think I would learn! Uh, Morty! Yes! To burp, Morty! Everyone does it, Morty! Don't pretend like you never heard one before! Yeah, I've decided, like, I, I really try hard not to be disgusting on stream. Like, coughing and burping is one of those things that you learn early as a streamer. Just don't do it. Y you know what I mean? Like, I I'm not gonna say who, but there is a fellow who, who I, I respect and, and enjoy. But this particular fellow was burping to, to fucking high heaven on the stream. And I was like, ooh, ooh that's kind of a party foul. <laughs> 
you know, I just realized I don't need to actually continue adding weight. I'm, I was, uh, sorry, it's, it's late. I'm lost in thought. There's, there's varying degrees of minor serious brain damage. But anyway, yeah, yeah, I was, I'm not, I'm not really a fan, so I'd like to apologize for that. I, I think it's kind of gross, but I still, you know, sometimes I can't help it. So I just turn it into a lay, lay Rick joke. Use my last potion. Uh, it's actually second to last. I know there is a, a fairy nearby, so I'm gonna like farm for that in a little bit. Get a few of them. God, I love the bow in Zelda games so much. The bow is so good. I remember I was always stingy with my arrows when I was like, growing up with Zelda. Because I never knew when I was going to use them for a puzzle. And I didn't like wasting things with ammo. But, I mean, they give you so many fucking arrows in Zelda games. Just use it, enjoy it, have fun. Use the bow. It's so good. And then in this game, you have the... Look at that. Precision. It's like, ah. Perfect. Did I say I was going to stream Final Fantasy VIII this year? Nah. No, I don't think I was going to... No, I'm good. I don't think I ever said that. But I'm, I'm especially... Alright. We got Chrono Trigger this year. Final Fantasy VII last year. Chrono Cross this year. Earthbound is probably going to happen this year. Did Skies of Arcadia last year. You know, so... Granted, I streamed most of these RPGs before, but that was when the audience was really... Like, a lot smaller. So I figured it would be okay to... Restream them, considering there's so many new people here. So yeah, Final Fantasy VIII is not my favorite Final Fantasy by a long shot. It has its great moments, it has its shitty moments, but I, uh, I really don't think... Skies was a while ago. It feels like it was less than a while ago, but it was a while ago, you're right. Um, Final Fantasy VIII is, is not a game I'm looking to revisit at, at, at any time soon. Same for Final Fantasy IX I streamed fairly recently as well. Oh, I know what I was supposed to do. Forgot about this thing, Majib. Sunny Jims. My son my son hello, my sunny Jims. Welcome to the old man stream. <laughs> come come and stay for the uh the forgetfulness and the inability to solve children puzzles. Final Fantasy IX is still pretty fresh on my brain. I don't remember when I streamed it. I don't think it's on full sauce, though. Uh, actually, here's a question. Is my entire Final Fantasy IX stream on YouTube in any capacity? Like on Vappy's old channels or anything like that? Check in the chat. I'm kind of curious. No? It's not. Okay. 
we're not going to rectify that this year. But I know at some point in the next few years, in my streaming career, I'm going to want to re-experience Final Fantasy IX. And I'm going to want to do it so that there's an archived version of it. And when that happens, it's going to be great. It's still a little too fresh on my mind. And it still feels like, I think it was like three years ago I streamed it, or maybe two and a half years ago. But when Final Fantasy IX gets streamed again, it's going to be really good. That's my favorite one. So it'll, it'll be special when it happens again. Vinny, you can break walls. Oh. Well, I guess I would have learned that now. <laughs> well. Unnecessary puzzle solving. hit Link in the head. No, the original Chrono Trigger stream is long gone. I don't, I don't think there's any remnants of that. I'd be, I'd be shocked if there's even a screenshot of me streaming Chrono Trigger in 2010 when the stream first started. Truly the rarest of screenshots on the internet. I started recording my streams, I think, sometime in, like, 2011. Late 2011. So there's, like... And even those, the quality is just terrible, but... And most are missing, but there's a few I still have archived from back then. And they're on one of my hard drives. I have a... I have a, a lot of internal hard drives, but I also have a lot of external hard drives, and I just keep a lot of stuff. Even though a lot of it's on YouTube, I still keep a lot of it. And, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty nuts. That's down. I still have my shitty Dok Nokem Forever stream. There's actually, um, videos of me playing Dok Nokem forever, and man, that game sucked, but I hated most of it. I had a few moments that were really funny. I remember Joel edited some videos that I think they're still, still on his channel. It should be, at least. And they're just videos of, of, uh, of I, I think, like, glitches and, and fucked up stupid moments in the game. Which was more or less the whole game. Oh my, Wii U controller's about to die, I didn't realize it wasn't plugged in. I usually keep this motherfucker plugged in constantly. And it's 4.05 a.m. Actually, I think, uh, <laughs> some of you w may remember that I actually got John St. John to, uh, do some promotions for Vine Sauce. I think it was like a hundred bucks, and a few people chipped in, and we, we, uh, I'm missing a treasure chest. I'm gonna have to get that. You know what, let me put this dude in his fucking bell first, in his, in his shitty bell. Then I'll get it. 
but yeah, I remember we got John. You can still find the promotions. They're on my YouTube channel. The real Duke Nukem voice. Really, really cool guy. I remember I emailed him and, you know, I PayPal'd him and told him the lines that we wanted him to say. And he, he did them. And, uh, yeah, he actually called me on the phone. Because he wanted to make sure, like, he wanted to know what he was getting himself into first. And I think, okay, cool camera. And second, he wanted to just make sure that we weren't, like, having a laugh about this. So, yeah, I spoke to the Duke Nukem voice actor, who's been in a number of games. But he's most famous for Doc. No, we didn't get David Hayter. He was, he was tough to contact. There's some people that just are impossible to get in touch with on the internet. And I understand it completely, trust me. After having to do people's school reports, I understand. But it's just when you hit a certain level, I think Hayter was just probably getting way too much. And he just took his contact info offline. And then when you get an agent, you know, you get work through that. So you, you probably would rather get emails through your agent. So yeah, we could never get Hater. We, we tried a few other people. We got, um, Mike from Red Letter Media did Plinkit, which I'm sure he regrets to this very day. And we also got, um, one of our old viewers, a really cool dude, got us, um, oh, motherfucker, I have to do this again. Oh, come on. Steve Bloom. So yeah, we got Steve Bloom. Don't want to miss out on a treasure chest. I mean, if I'm here... I know there's another heart piece in this dungeon somewhere, so I, I guess I'm gonna have to make the attempt here. <laughs> I tried. I didn't actually get Wayne June to do the promos, the Darkest Dungeon narrator. He, um, he was doing them for a bunch of people. And I think I'm now, am I fucked? The, the, the developers got him for a number of people to promote the release of Darkest Dungeon. And we, I, we didn't ask, he just did it. So yeah, I was like, online one day, and then out of fucking nowhere. Steal yourself, it's time for the boo room. <laughs> now we don't do vine bumps, because we don't really have an autopilot. There's no like, real commercial system anymore, or like, video system. Um, speaking frankly, that was designed, that was just a staple of livestream. Livestream had that system, where you could set YouTube videos to watch, and people would watch them and chat about them, and it was just like, <laughs> watching a number of hours of videos and memorize the, memorizing them. It was called autopilot. But that was exclusively a live stream thing. And once Twitch became the de facto streaming platform and live stream started eating dick, then, uh, yeah, that stopped happening. So we don't really need that anymore. I know some people miss the autopilot. I, I do too, I'm not gonna lie, but it was designed in a lot of ways to keep people hanging ar around and chatting. Which, if you know how I feel about that these days, oh, that's not exactly something that's a lot of fun. Because when that happens, the amount of moderation that has to be done becomes absurd. And uh, it's, it's, it's really not a lot of fun to handle personal drama on a daily basis. So, you know, I'd rather people just come here and hang out for the stream and then talk, and make friends through that. And, you know, talk in the chat, talk on the forum, Twitter, that's just easier for us. We don't, we don't want to be babysitters on the stream. Anyway, that's a little bit more serious and a little bit more in-depth than I wanted to get into tonight. Because that's, that's something that's been established and talked about a few times. You know. No one's getting paid to be a community manager, you know what I mean? 
but um, yeah, that was why we did vine bumps because videos would play at random, and then we ma I started making my own, and then uh, just by chance, I guess we thought we could get some some bigger names, and we did, and it worked out. It was pretty cool. It says there's a treasure chest over here. Right in this alcove. So, the question is... Oh, I see. There's one. Uh, the playlist? I tried the playlist thing. The Twitch playlist where people can watch my old streams. I don't really see the point of it because you could watch it at your own time and not only that, people were like in the chat and it kind of created that same moderator situation where there had to be mods around constantly. Um, and then the other problem with it was people were like, oh, is Vinny live? I mean, sure, you would imagine that would get... Eventually people would learn, but for a while people weren't understanding that it was it was a playlist and it wasn't in fact live. So there was just a ton of explaining to do. All the time. I figure, look, if you want to watch the old streams, you know where to find them. Neat idea. And now Twitch is like kind of got this social media thing that's happening now. I don't feel. Whoa. Hello? Hello. Oh, god damn this fucking headset. Um, yeah, get off my lawn, exactly. Um, there's a thing now where Twitch is trying to integrate some form of like social media shit. And, uh, oh, yeah, I, I typed hello. Headset. Um, I'm looking at it now, and it has 444 likes, or rather, alien faces. Um, yeah, if you go to the main Twitch page, You'll see it. I just posted a new one. Uh, I guess it's for updates. Like, I can tell you when I'm doing a stream, or I can tell you when a video's out. Uh, it's not a terrible idea. It doesn't look like you can post comments on it. Uh, let's see. The, mo the one I just posted, I am live now. Raise your mellows. That, I got, that has three. My hello has 474. So yeah, that's uh that's a brand new thing that's happening on Twitch now. Yep. Yeah, if you just scroll down, you'll see it. It's, it's called channel feed. I completely forgot about it until just now and I actually don't hate the idea. I think it's all right. I see some people in chat that aren't crazy about it. It's, it's optional. I'll probably just, every now and then, if there's something... Like, for example, I'm gonna shill my band on there real quick after I'm done streaming. <laughs> so, sure, I mean, yeah, it has, it has its uses. Here's an update, okay. Um, charity stream. Whenever we have any, like, solid information about that, I'll post it there as well as everywhere else, which I'm sure you'd rather find that information out on Twitter instead of that, but whatever. And, uh, I'll also, if there's any conventions coming up, I'll post it there too, so. As long as it doesn't become, like, a full-on social media page, then I guess it's alright. Oh, I, 
Everything has to be Facebook these days. I don't, I don't know. What the fuck is this camera? What the fuck? hydraulic press channel they did a bowling ball and a bowling pin and I enjoyed that one very much and a fruit salad what a dumb channel that is but it's so fucking fun to watch things get crushed in a hydraulic press what why why is it so fun to watch that stuff Hearing him mispronounce words and laugh and saying, What the fuck? The fruit salad one was pretty good, yeah. I enjoyed that one. Damn. For those that don't know, it's it's just a channel where this dude just crushes various objects with his hydraulic press. That's it. That's the whole channel. And it's it's incredible. Now we've returned to the very beginning of the dungeon. And the statue is back. Oh, the snake crown was great. Yeah, I love the snake crown. I love when they, they crush the clay things. It's so dopey. I want to see, okay, the next of those novelty type channels I want to see is the lava channel. I want to see someone, I mean, I would do this if I could get lava. I want to see someone apply lava, note the phrasing, apply lava to everyday household objects and just see what the fuck happens. And then when he's done, you go, what the fuck? I didn't get the ferry. Oh, that's one thing I wanted to do. I, I missed it. Somehow. Are oh, you... Scum!
Maybe there's gonna be a ferry here. That would be cool. Let me get a bottle ready just in case. Almost done with the stream. Got a boss, and then stream is over. Yeah, there you go. There's one. There's a channel that pours molten copper onto stuff. Like glue, peanut butter, light bulbs. Alright, I'm interested in the molten copper channel. That's almost like my lava channel idea. But lava's just- it just sounds so much cooler. Oh shit. Armo Goma. It's Goma too. Walking on to that shit. Receptacles. Spider is swole. Is that it then? Is that all you've got? Not quite. <laughs> There's a little bit more, huh? Sounds like Scrimmy Bingus music. <laughs> Read 
really, really easy boss. Great dungeon. Overall, that, that is a very fucking strong dungeon. Three of the mirror shards are ours. Just one left. Even on hero mode, though, go mode was pretty... Pretty pathetic. Link. Fun fight, though, overall. It was like... Having to, to hit it with the big things, that was fun. You saw how nasty that monster was, right? The evil within the shards is more powerful than you can imagine. You know, we could be assembling something truly terrible here. Could be something that we'll ultimately have to destroy. We have to hurry, Link. Let's find the last shard. We have to reach the sky. That's where the last shard is supposed to be. Oh, I'll fucking grow wings then, you fucking twonk. That was actual footage of me cleaning the spider room. Very good. Twenty-seven oh three. Okay. Double save, of course. time and then bed and this definitely went to oh this is it's 4 30. okay tomorrow there will not be a stream until 4 30. <laughs> there will not be a stream until 4 30. however today was an exception because dungeon and i, I didn't want to do one of those start the dungeon and not finish the dungeon things however i do regret that because now everyone is dying myself included we will sleep. Except if you're in Australia, in which case you've, you've got plenty of day ahead of you. <laughs>